There definitely comes a time when you just have to put your foot down. But how and where you put that foot down can be very important. That is why we spend a fair bit of time in martial arts paying attention to different ways to take a step. In some martial arts, and in fact many martial arts, there are different ways to approach stepping. Some treat it like a power training exercise where you focus on the core and the leg strength and aligning the tendons and the purpose of stepping is to build internal power and structure. It's not for agility. There are other ways of training the stepping which are primarily for uh, developing technique and tactics and strategy. So determining where and how to place the foot that will give you the best mechanical advantage relative to your opponent. And there are others which simply seek ease of movement. You want to make the stepping as natural and light and adaptable as possible. All of these approaches are important. In the beginning, we want to learn to understand the body and how it moves. And in so doing, develop the most efficient and relaxed and tactically superior way of moving. We'll get into those other ways of stepping, which <laughs> can really improve your workout. Uh, how you approach the stepping will determine whether or not you burn calories at a rate of oh, 1,000 calories per hour or 50 calories per hour. Tai Chi can be as physically intense as cross-country skiing or any other sport. It can also be as relaxing as taking a nap. And a lot of this depends on which approach to the stepping you are taking. At the end of the last lesson, we were left standing on one leg with the waist twisted, the spine twisted, the hands to the side, the right toe was turned out a little, and now we are prepared to take a step. And to do that, the left foot leaves the ground and moves off in the direction in which we are stepping. You place the heel first and then the toe. Sounds simple? Okay. When you lift your left foot, be sure that you are not lifting anything else. Because here's what happens. When people lift the foot, the, the psoas muscle tightens up and the spine contracts, the pelvis starts to move and change shape, uh, change orientation. And the, you start to lift your whole body up. When you are standing on one leg, your main focus is that leg and that stability and that balance. And there is just one or two little muscles in the left hip that raise the knee. So you want to be able to raise the foot without changing anything else about the, the, about the body. So I'm twisted, I'm balanced, I'm stable, and I raise this by just contracting the iliacus. Just one part of it, not the psoas, just the iliacus. And it's a tiny little muscle, and it does all the work. See if you can practice just relaxing that leg as much as you can and thinking about being as stable as you can on that supporting leg. There's a, a lesson I was taught years ago when someone tried to teach me how to sing, that when you're singing a high note, don't reach for it. Don't stretch up. Don't go, ah! trying to sing high. Instead, think down, deep into the body. Relax, as if you're going to sing a low note. And then you go, oh, and you allow the resonance to reach the top of your head. If you reach for it, if you strain for it, you'll end up fighting against that resonance and you won't be able to reach the high note. So, the similar principle here. You want to raise the leg, only the leg. Everything else you think of pouring your weight into the supporting leg and you let it sink right down and spiral and then this leg just drifts up, it floats. Then, then you can choose the direction where this leg wants to go because it's not fighting against a bunch of other complex vectors, tension and so on in the body. So you turn, you spiral, twisting the spine, relax, the knee just floats up and now you get to decide where you're going to put it. And that's another nice thing about doing it like this. You have a lot of choices. Because you're not simply falling onto the supporting leg, you can step this way 
or this way, or this way, or this way, this way, or do whatever you like. Where will you place the foot? Well, in this form, we step out into what we call a front bow stance, or uh, gong bu, or sometimes a bow and arrow stance, sometimes called the mountain climbing stance. So we are going to step into a bow stance, a bow and arrow stance, also known as gong bu, or a mountain climbing stance. This is where one leg is straight, the other leg is bent, and the pelvis is oriented in the direction of the bent leg. We say sometimes the supporting leg, but of course both legs are supporting you. So the pelvis turns more or less in the direction that the front toe, knee, thigh are all oriented. So the toe, the knee, the thigh are pointing this way, so the pelvis is oriented in more or less the same direction. This means that there has to be a little bit of room between your heels, laterally, for the pelvis to turn that way. If you are on a tight rope, like this, this is a common mistake that beginners make, and there's a style of Tai Chi where they take all the mistakes that a beginner makes and make it part of the style, but we won't talk about them here. So, yeah, this would be an error, because the pelvis turns, and now the, the angle of my feet has changed. Once the pelvis turns this far, now you see how my legs are have to angle inward in order to reach my feet. So I can fix this by turning the foot and orienting the bow stance this way. So we talk sometimes about a wide bow stance or a long bow stance. So this would be a long bow stance where there's just enough room for my pelvis. So I have about this much room between my heels. A couple of floorboards. That's a long bow stance. This is a wide bow stance. My toe is pointing in the same direction. The thigh is pointing in the same direction. But there are a number of floorboards between my heels. So I'm still going the same direction, but I'm on a different path. So, by stepping wider, I can change my position, as opposed to gaining ground. So, to measure the minimum width of a stance, we'll measure the width between our hips. And we use this as the width of our stance for whichever direction we are facing. So, this tells us the orientation of the pelvis, as well as the distance between the heels laterally. So how far apart are the feet going to be on this plane? I'll take this, I'll line it up with my hips. So if my heel is here, the other heel is here, this is a little bit more than hip width apart. When I turn out the toe and t turn the pelvis and twist the waist and the spine and bring the foot in, now my foot is here. If I want to step out into a very standard bow stance, I will step out along this line, and then the pelvis turns, pivoting on the weighted hip. It comes around, and now my hips are square, and I have this width of a stance for this orientation. You will sometimes see people standing in a much narrower stance, in a narrower bow stance. Is this incorrect? Well, it is if the toe is pointing straight forward. This is incorrect, and you'll feel unbalanced when you are like this. But if the toe is turned in, this is fine, because the orientation of the pelvis is this way. So that's fine. The bow stance is this way. If I pick this whole thing up and turn it, look at that. I have a pretty wide bow stance. So this is the same bow stance. I can have a fairly narrow stance. I can squeeze this up a little bit. So it's like that. And not everyone's hips are going to be the same. And the angles of the, of the hip socket are a little different. So this is why there are different kinds of ski bindings for women. If you're 
an elite athlete, you may find that you have a different kind of boot because the angle is different, because the hips are different. Everyone's different. That's what we all have in common. Here, this is a fairly standard bow stance. And when we teach, often in the pedagogy, we'll, people will draw 45 degree angles on the floor. So you have to have a, this is at a 45 degree angle. You step out at a 45 degree angle. You put the toe forward. And this is your standard square bow stance. That's a good way of teaching, actually. It works pretty well. But we want to be aware of the fact that there can be a fair amount of variation in your bow stance. You can be as narrow as the hips. Sometimes just a little bit pushing that limit can be fine. And you can be quite wide. And there's the norm, the normal range, which is suitable for most body types and most tactics. So I pick up my foot, pick up my leg without tensing anything else in the body. And then I extend my foot and I place the heel. But I don't place it quite as far as I can. If I place my heel as far as it can go, then what happens then is that when I put the toe down, my entire center of gravity gets pulled forward. So if I place my foot here and put the foot down, my body is unchanged. But if I place my foot as far as it can go, and then I put my toe down, see how my center moves? I get drawn out of my foot, and this can, can compromise your balance and your stability. And for the purpose of this particular pedagogy, we don't want to do that. So for this teaching method, we place the heel, then the toe, then line up the thigh, make sure the thigh is lined up with the front foot, and then the right hip comes around, like so. So when you place the foot, make sure you don't go too far, and then put the toe down. Okay. So one way to figure out how far you should step is to simply slide your foot out without moving your body, and then that is where your heel goes, and pick up your toe and put your foot back in that place. There will always be a tendency to step not, not far enough or too far. And we want to avoid stepping too far. That is the main error at this stage of your, your progress. So at this stage of the method, we don't want to go too far. We want to maintain that central stability. Now we've talked about where to place the foot and how far. Now we want to think about the thigh. So when I'm standing on the supporting leg, the pelvis is turned a little bit to the right, the waist is twisted, and when the foot is in the air, the left knee could be pointing this direction, and I can step out as if I'm stepping sideways. Or I could step out uh, and point my toe in that direction. This would be a T-step. So now this is like the letter T, and it's a tightrope step as well, because now I'm like this. So the heel is on the same the same floorboard in this case, and the pelvis turns, and then I run into resistance and tension, and the, the knees start to torque because the stance is too narrow. I could turn my toe this way again, as I said before, and now it's fine. It's nice and stable. Or I can simply step a little farther to the side and then adjust the back foot as I come in. But I want to be stable. So the thigh is lined up with the foot. As I place my foot, I point my knee in the direction that I want to go, not in the direction that I'm moving my foot. If I point my knee in the direction that I'm moving my foot, then my toe will be angled off that direction. But if I point my knee in the direction that I'm moving, I place my heel and the toe and then the thigh. So the hip bends a little and the thigh lines up. And now I'm oriented in this direction. Of course, this is only if this is where I want to go. And for this part of the form, this is where we want to go. So I pick the knee up just the knee, nice and relaxed, and I step out, place the heel, and then the toe, and then come around. When you raise the leg, 
try to avoid doing this. Just raise the knee and let the foot hang down and then place the foot. Don't raise the knee and pull the heel back. There are many reasons for pulling your heel back, but usually they don't happen when you're raising your knee forward. In a tactical situation, if someone's trying to sweep your foot, you want to lift your heel like this, but you don't want to raise the knee and lift the heel because then you're not actually getting out of the way of their sweep. So you raise the heel like that to get out of the way, or you raise the knee in order to move forward or to strike. But if you pull the heel back when you raise the knee, then you take some of the power out of the strike. So when you raise the knee, the foot is hanging loosely, and then you place the heel, then the toe, and then come forward. So standing on one leg, raise the knee in the most relaxed way possible, let the foot hang loosely, and then extend the foot, place the heel, then the toe, line up the thigh with the foot. So you raise the knee, not the heel, place the heel, then drop the toe, line up the thigh, engage the ground with your front thigh. So don't just drive yourself forward. This is translation. We want rotation. So you, as soon as you line up your thigh with the front foot, then the leg remains fairly still at this point. The hip becomes the fulcrum and the pelvis rotates around that front hip. So, standing on one leg, raise the knee but not the foot, point the thigh in the direction that you want to step, place the heel but not too far, drop the toe, line up your thigh with the front foot, that means bending your hip a little, engage the ground with your front foot, with your front thigh, push into the center of the earth and as you increase the amount of weight on the front thigh, the pelvis rotates around quite naturally, like so. So again, turn out the toe, turn the hips, twist the waist, let the, let the foot come in, balance on the supporting leg, let the other leg come up by itself, relaxing the foot, Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe. Line up the thigh with the forward leg. Then pivot around the front hip. And finish in a front forward bow stance. When you get to this front forward bow stance, front forward bow stance, yeah, that's actually it, because you can have a side forward bow stance. Yeah. And you could have a front back bow stance and a side back bow stance. This is a front forward bow stance or a bow stance, if you like. So, what was I saying? Something about the bow stance. Hmm. Okay, so when you finish this bow stance, you may find it comfortable to adjust your back foot. So, if the toe is turned out uh, about 30 degrees or 40 degrees or 45 degrees, it doesn't really matter. Because when you get to where you're going, you will almost always want to adjust the back foot anyway. I suggest that you adjust it by pivoting either on the heel or on the middle of the foot not on the toe, because if you pivot on the toe, you end up increasing the distance between your heels and your stance becomes longer. Now, that's not a real problem if you have really strong thighs, but think about what we were talking about here, where you place the heel but not too far, and then the toe, because I want to be able to put my toe down without compromising the alignment of my upper body. So if I lengthen my stance by pushing my heel back. Now if I were to go back here, the stance is now longer. That's okay because I'm already in the bow stance, but 
I'm also uh, going to have to go lower in order to pick this foot up. So if you continually do that by adjusting your stance by moving the heel backwards, then you will end up going lower and lower until your thighs are horizontal. That's fine if you want to really cook your thighs like that, but I don't suggest that. Okay, I just did. Uh, I don't recommend that in the beginning. I advise against it in the beginning especially. If you want to, you can practice your Tai Chi underneath a dining table. <laughs> but that's, again, a different type of challenge. So, let the knee float up, let the heel drop, not too far, then the toe, line up the thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, and let the back hip come around. And if you like, you can adjust the back toe. There. There's your bow stance. So let's just practice this a few times. Stepping into a front forward bow stance. Weight on one leg, raise the knee, place the heel not too far, drop the toe, line up the front thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, the pelvis rotates around the front hip, and if you like, adjust the back foot. Come back, bring in the foot. Raise the knee, but not the foot. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the left thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, and the pelvis rotates around the front hip. Come back, twist, pick up the toe, bring the foot in, and let's do it again. Raise the knee, but not the foot. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the front thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, and let the pelvis rotate around the front hip. Front forward bow stance. Back, a couple more times. Pick up the toe, bring in the foot. Raise the knee, but not the foot. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the thigh, engage the ground with the thigh, and allow the pelvis to rotate around the front hip. Come back, wait on the back leg, pick up the toe, raise the knee, bring in the toe. Raise the knee, but not the foot. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe. Engage with the thigh, and the back hip comes around into a front forward bow stance. Let's do the other side. You can do this mirror image, by the way, when you're following. You don't have to do the same foot. It's up to you. So, weight on one leg, turn the hips, twist the waist, raise the knee, but not the foot, place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, and the pelvis comes around the front hip. Come back. Bring in the foot. Raise the knee, but not the foot. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the thigh, Engage the ground with the front thigh and allow the pelvis to rotate around the front hip. Come back. Bring in the foot. So the pelvis is turned in the direction of the weighted leg. The waist is twisted. I raise the front knee, but not the foot, not the heel. I don't pull the heel back. And then place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the front thigh, engage the ground with the front thigh, and let the pelvis rotate around the front hip. Wait on the back leg, turn, bring in the foot. 
Raise the knee, but not the heel. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the thigh. Engage the ground with the front thigh and let the pelvis revolve around the right hip. And come back. Bring in the foot. Raise the knee, but not the heel. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe, line up the front thigh. Engage the ground with the front thigh. Allow the pelvis to revolve around the front hip. Come back. Turn and twist. Bring in the front foot. Raise the knee, but not the heel. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe. Line up the front thigh. Engage the ground with the front thigh as the pelvis comes around the front leg. Come back. Twist. Bring in the foot. One more time. Raise the knee, but not the heel. Place the heel, but not too far. Drop the toe. Line up the front thigh. Engage the ground with the front thigh and allow the pelvis to revolve around the front hip. Good. You may find that your thighs are a little tired. That is, if you are in a low enough stance to be able to step comfortably. If your leg gets tired, of course, and you find yourself straightening the, the supporting leg, then you'll only be able to step this far. You have to bend the leg, twist, that improves your balance, and then you can practice going lower and longer. Lower, longer, lower, longer, lower, longer, lower, longer. So, now we have gone from here to here to here to here. Stepped out, placed the heel, then the toe, then the thigh, and now we are ready for Pang and some silk reeling exercises, which will come in the next video. Isn't that exciting? So, you can practice the entire part here. Pang. We'll get to that later. Next lesson. Very good. More practice.